For Krama Media's Polity, this is Sane Damini. Joining me today is the City of Cape Town Mayor Jordan Hill Lewis to discuss his plans and the vision for the city. When you took over the position as mayor of Cape Town, in your inaugural speech, you said words are no longer enough. It is time for fresh thinking. How have you applied this philosophy so far as you run the city? I try to apply it every day by questioning the way that things have always been done and trying to ask whether there's some way that we can do it better to get a better outcome for the residents of Cape Town and particularly the poorest residents of Cape Town. Mm -hmm. And so I've tried to do that, for example, in thinking about the way that we deal with energy insecurity, where for 15 years we have simply accepted that energy insecurity is a fact of our lives. Mm -hmm. And now we are no longer accepting that. And we are trying to do what we can to move with real ambition to end load shedding in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. uh, we've tried to do that with public transport and with policing, always trying to question the way things have been done before and to say whether we can't be more ambitious, more fresh uh, to do things differently on behalf of the people. Talking about energy, you've made bold statements uh, regarding reducing the impact of load shedding. I know that the city's IPP procurement process is closing this month. Tell us about your vision now for this process and how it will benefit the people of Cape Town. My vision is simply to have a city without load shedding. Uh, and I think that that is not too much to ask in a modern country in the 21st century. And yet it is, it is a condition that is absent uh, in all of South Africa, which I think is an absolute tragedy. And South Africa has become far too accepting of failure and mediocrity, particularly in government. And I really believe as a country, we should start to demand more excellence and demand more of the basics that are required for a functional, successful country. And energy is certainly one of them. And so we are going to push very hard to get these IPPs uh, contracted and built and feeding power into the grid. That in itself will not be enough to end load shedding. We also have to uh, secure storage capacity because renewable energy is not available at all times of the day, of course. Mm -hmm. So we've got to do storage capacity as well. So when those two planks of the plan are in place, mm -hmm. then we can move towards starting to end load shedding in the city. The consequences will be profoundly positive. It will be a huge economic boom and incentive for our city. It will really help to get people out of poverty and into work opportunities. And that is ultimately our purpose in Cape Town is that's what we are trying to do. Is to, do, is to do as much as we can to grow our economy to get people out of poverty. The city is also planning to introduce a, what is called a demand site management, a, which will entail rolling out devices to hundreds of thousands of Cape Townian homes, allowing the city also to remotely shut off appliances that use a lot of electricity. Would you mind sharing that initiative with us? Yes, this will be a voluntary initiative only if people want to participate and it will save them money. Uh, they will have lower electricity bills every month. But you know, most of us, while you and I are sitting here at, the, at, at work uh, or wherever we are, there is just a few appliances at home using most of our electricity. So the, just the hot water geyser alone actually uses more than a third of all of our electricity. So if we could, for example, switch off the hot water geyser for two hours a day, that would really help us to end load shedding in Cape Town. And so with the, with the beauty and blessing of modern technology and internet technology, we are able to put essentially what amounts to a SIM card into modern geysers and allow those geysers to be switched on and off remotely you wouldn't even know it. You wouldn't even know that your geyser is on or off. You wouldn't feel any difference in the temperature of your water. And yet it would help us really uh, to manage load shedding in Cape Town. So that's one of the plans that we have on a voluntary basis to help with load shedding. And uh, two years ago, the, your city was just 90 days away from uh, running out of water. Uh, we've seen in the news now that uh, Deben recently implemented what is called a uh, water rationing. And Nelson Mandela Bay, which was recently visited by Helen Zille, also dealing with uh, water issues. 
how did the city of Cape Town manage to avert uh, the water crisis? And what can you share with the other cities that are facing a similar crisis now? First, your first question is, how did we avert it? We averted it by getting buy-in from the public to cut water consumption very drastically. It's still the best example in the whole world of cutting water consumption by more than 55%. So we were using less than half of our ordinary uh, daily usage as Capetonians. And that's what helped us extend that time period so that we could wait for the for the winter rains and eventually the, the drought broke and uh, and the dams started to fill up. So that's really what saved us. It was it was up to Cape Tonians. The lesson that we've learned, this is your second question, very important question, is we must not rely on national government to provide the basic infrastructure like, like uh, bulk water supplies that come from dams, for example. Uh, we have to start to build our own water infrastructure to provide for the future needs of our cities. And that is what Cape Town is doing now through aquifer drilling and desalination and water recycling. We are, we are starting to provide for our own water future so that our residents can feel secure that when the next drought comes, that, that we will be ready. What you have to do is protect your residents from the consequences of a national state that is increasingly unable to provide the basic services that are required by citizens. Whether it be in policing or water or public transport or energy, you've got to start doing more of these things for yourself as cities. And that is our message to every city, that you've got to become more and more self-reliant. And that is what we are doing in Cape Town with regards to water. And your city is also iconic and it is regarded as one of the world's most uh, beautiful cities. Yes, there are a rising number of uh, homeless people. What have you done so far, uh, Mr. Mayor, to help the homeless people as well as the poor communities? We have invested in a lot more what we call safe spaces in Cape Town, which is essentially a facility that the city offers that provides you a place to sleep, a warm bed, a place to store your personal belongings, a, a hot shower, toilets, medical attention. And we call those safe spaces. And we've got a new one that is being built and we expanded one of the old ones. We doubled it in size. And we are also finding, we're busy in the process of finding land to build another three more. So we are going to expand those very significantly to try and help with the issue of homelessness. And each of those homeless people are getting a, a, a visit from one of our staff members to see how we can help care for them better with access to social grants or ID books or job placement programs uh, or referrals to mental health care or drug addiction clinics, alcohol addiction clinics. So we are trying to, to offer as many of those care interventions in, as possible and then also the alternative accommodation in the safe spaces. But I must also be clear that when, those, when all of those interventions and offers of help are refused, as they are most often unfortunately refused, then we also have to protect public spaces for public use. It cannot be right for public spaces to be taken over by uh, one person or, or a small group of people who start to live there. So we, you know, we will, if necessary, approach the courts at that time to make sure that public spaces are open for public use. Mm. Have you been able to find or made a, make an assessment as to why some of these people will refuse a assistance? Yes, sure. Most of them have, the, the, a, a very large number of them have got certain addiction problems, whether it's alcohol or drugs. And then a smaller percentage have got uh, mental health, either diagnosed or undiagnosed mental health issues. Mm. Uh, and of course, it's very difficult for uh, for city-run safe spaces or for shelters that are run by NGOs to allow people to be under the influence of drugs or alcohol inside their venues. And so a lot of people turn it down for that reason. Uh, some people don't want to leave their, their partners and friends, and a lot of the, the space that we have in shelters is only for single people. You're not allowed to live as a couple. And so one of the ways that we've tried to address that is, is by building some couple space in our new safe space. Uh, so I think those are probably the biggest reasons. 
And uh, we've seen some people even encouraging you via a social uh, media that uh, you must work uh, towards a uh, Cape independence, but you are opposed uh, to that idea. Would you mind sharing with us why you are not uh, comfortable with that idea? No, no, because I love, I love South Africa too much. I want South Africa to work. I'm a very passionate South African. I love this country. And the whole purpose of what we are trying to do in Cape Town is to show that with a sensible, hardworking, clean government, you can actually have a country that works. You can have a country that moves forward and not backwards. Mm -hmm. So I understand why people feel at an emotional level disappointed with South Africa, mm -hmm. anxious about the future. And they may think in that, in that time that the best thing to do is to, well, let's cut off this little corner of the country. That is not the answer. The answer is to make the country work. And, and that is what we are trying to show in Cape Town. And you've promised uh, Mr. Mayor to run the most uh, jobs forecast and entrepreneur friendly administration as the city. Are you making progress in this regard? Not fast enough progress. I think we've got a lot of work still to do. Uh, but, you know, this is this is the most important thing. There, there really is nothing nothing more important than growing the economy and, and creating jobs because if you look at our poverty and unemployment numbers you soon will come to the conclusion that our society is not really sustainable if it if it continues uh, with the kind of unemployment figures and poverty figures that we currently have so this is uh, yeah this is priority number one this in fact this is the thing that every other priority has to be measured up against uh, so uh, so we're not making as fast progress as we would like, but it is something that that uh, is on my mind all day, every day. Uh, the country uh, is still reeling with shock at what uh, was uh, published uh, recently in the state capture report. How are you making sure that your administration is clean, uh, Mr. Mayor? We take an absolute zero tolerance approach to corruption of any sort, whether it's five rand or five million rand. You will be treated with the harshest, harshest possible treatment. The, the public need to trust and know that they, when, they, uh, when they pay their taxes in a DA-run government, that their money will be respected, that it will be spent well, that it will be spent on improving the lives of the poor. So th that is our commitment, and we live it out. Uh, when the Zondo Commission report was published, we wrote to all of the companies implicated in the Zondo Commission, and... Uh, you know, to, to provide us with reasons why we shouldn't cancel all of their contracts with the city of Cape Town. We do not practice the evil practice of cater deployment, which is the, the root cause of state capture and the reason why so much of state capacity has collapsed. So I hope that people can see that where there are examples of, of wrongdoing, of course, there are 33,000 people that work uh, for the city of Cape Town. So I cannot see what every one of them is doing every day. But where there are examples, it will be dealt with extremely harshly and people will know that, that this is a clean government. I'm sure the city is also relieved now that uh, the country has been told uh, to put away masks for now because we don't yeah. know what will happen in the future. Very relieved. We've been calling on this for months and months. Uh, we really wanted our stadiums full, our theatres full, our movie houses, our art galleries, everything to be back at full capacity. It took far, far, far too long. And I think it harmed the, the economy and all of those workers who work in those businesses unnecessarily. But at least it is finally done. And after 810 days, we are free from all of those restrictions. And lastly, uh, Mr. Mayor, what is the one thing uh, that you would want to leave as your legacy in the city of Cape Town? If I could make sure that uh, there are more opportunities for people to find work, where poverty is lower, where the quality of life of the poorest residents is a little bit better, mm. uh, then I will feel like I've done something really useful with my life. There was Cape Town Mayor Jordan Hill Lewis in conversation with Polity about his plans and vision for the city.